Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to Trigonometry. Today we're looking at the trigonometric functions y equals sine x, y equals cosine x, and y equals tangent x, and their graphic representations in the coordinate plane. So let's begin with y equals sine x. Here we have a function. Our input is an x value and our output is the y value. Now sine, cosine, tangent, all trigonometric functions are periodic. So there's a pattern of repetition. We're going to look at one cycle of each of our functions. So for sine, one cycle is one complete revolution around the circle, which goes from 0 to 2 pi in radians. And for sine at 0, the sine value is 0. And when we complete the revolution, we end up at 2 pi, which also has a sine value of 0. Halfway through, we are at pi. And halfway before there, pi over 2. And then between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. And at these five critical points, the curve for y equals sine x reaches 1 at pi over 2, goes back to 0 at pi, negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, and back to 0 at 2 pi. So our range on the y-axis is from negative 1 to positive 1, and this is one cycle uh, or one period on the x-axis from 0 to 2 pi for the function y equals sine x. I can use my function, either the algebra or the graph, to identify my outputs for various inputs. So for y equals sine of x, if I have an input of 3 pi over 2, then I can see on the graph where 3 pi over 2 is on the x-axis, the y value is negative 1. Or the input value of pi over 6, and pi over 6 is close to 0, far to the left of the curve. At pi over 6, I can identify my y value approximately with the graph, or exactly with algebra, as 1 half. At pi over 6, the sine value, as we see on the graph, as well as the unit circle gives us, sine is 1 half. So these are two outputs for the input values into the function y equals sine of x. There are three possible adjustments to the function which relate to amplitude, period, and vertical translation. And we can see where these concepts lie in the more complete general sine function, which is y equals a times sine bx plus c. We'll identify our three characteristics and then look at an example. Amplitude is the value a, and period is 2 pi divided by b, and vertical displacement is c. So these are three characteristics of the general sine function, and we'll see how a given function results in a variation in output compared to our first example. So let's look at y equals 2 times sine of x, and we'll compare that function to y equals sine of 2x. 
So beginning with y equals 2 times sine of x, what I see is my amplitude is 2. So my amplitude is the upper limit as well as the lower limit of my function. So my range is now negative 2 to 2. And I don't have any other adjustments on my to my function. So I'm going from 0 to 2 pi in one period. And the adjustment is, instead of going up to 1 and down to negative 1, I'm going up to 2 and down to negative 2 in one period. So the amplitude is not 1. Rather, in y equals 2 sine x, the amplitude is 2. Now let's look at our next example, y equals sine of 2x. And in this case, the change relates to the period. So we can calculate the period as 2 pi divided by, notice our b value is 2. So period 2 pi divided by 2, the period is pi. Thus instead of one period going from 0 to 2 pi, one period will go from 0 to pi. So from 0 to 2 pi, we would actually have two periods for the function. And the amplitude is 1, so our range will be negative 1 to 1. And we'll see what happens in this case is that in the range 0 to 2 pi, we have two cycles. So I've completed one cycle from 0 to pi. And then to continue, I would complete a second cycle or a second period from pi to 2 pi. So for the function y equals sine 2x, the adjustment is that the period is decreased from 2 pi to pi. And if we show the range of 0 to 2 pi, we would have two complete periods in that range for y equals sine of 2x. And finally, let's look at the function y equals 5 sine of 1 third x minus 2. So we have adjustments in this case to our amplitude, our period, and our vertical displacement. Let's calculate the period. Period is 2 pi over b. And in this case, our b value is 1 over 3. So 2 pi divided by 1 over 3 is 6 pi. And we'll look at one period going to 6 pi on the x-axis. Our halfway point will be at 3 pi. Now notice that we have a vertical displacement of negative 2. So I'm going to mark my center point at negative 2. And the amplitude is 5, so I'm going to go up from negative 2 by 5, which would get me to a value of 3 and down from negative 2 by 5, which will get me to a value of negative 7. And then we can also plot the 0 or the x-axis up here as well. So we can see that what we've done is we've shifted our graph since the vertical displacement centers us at negative 2. We're a little bit below the x-axis, centering at x equals negative 2. So where will this graph end up? Well, we start at x equals 0 and y equals negative 2. And I'll go up to 3, which is a movement or an amplitude of 5. Come back down to 3 pi, which is at x equal, y equals negative 2. Going down to 7, so I reflect my amplitude of 5 from negative 2 to negative 7. 
and then reaching negative 2, y equals negative 2, at the value for x of 6 pi. So notice I've completed one period. I've extended the period because of the b value of 1 third. The period is extended by a factor of 3 from 2 pi to 6 pi. My amplitude is 5, so the range with the centered line of y equals negative 2, my range is negative 7 on the y-axis to 3 on the y-axis. This is the function y equals 5 sine 1 third x minus 2. Now for each of these functions, let's evaluate the input value of 11 pi over 6. Function of 11 pi over 6 in all three cases. So in our first function, we'll have 2 times sine of 11 pi over 6. And sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So this is 2 times negative 1 half with a final output value of negative 1. So for the function y equals 2 times sine of x, an input value of 11 over 6 results in an output value of negative 1. In the second function, y equals sine of 2x, we will have sine of 2 times 11 pi over 6, which is sine of 22 pi over 6. And the value of sine 22 pi over 6 is negative square root of 3 over 2. So the output value for the input 11 pi over 6 into the function y equals sine 2x is negative square root of 3 over 2. And then finally, the same input value into our third function y equals 5 sine 1 third x minus 2. So here we'll have 5 times sine of 1 third times 11 pi over 6 minus 2. So we have 5 times sine of 11 pi over 18 minus 2, which is 5 times 0 0.9397 minus 2, which is 2.698. Our final output value for the input of 11 pi over 6 into y equals 5 times sine 1 third x minus 2 is 2.698. And to connect the algebra to our graphs, I'm going to mark off on each of our three graphs 11 pi over 6, as well as the point on the curve, which we've calculated as our output value in each of our three examples. So we have 11 pi over 6 in both of our first cases. We have a negative value on the curve, which is in line with our calculations. And then in the third case, 11 pi over 6 gave us a positive output, which we can see on the curve we're above the x-axis, a y value of 0. We're greater than that graphically as well as algebraically. 2.698 is above the x-axis. And in our first two examples, we have a negative output values. And we can see in both graphs that our point on the curve at 11 pi over 6 is below the x-axis. So in this lesson, we've learned about the sine function 
And in our next lesson, we're going to learn about the cosine function, calculating outputs algebraically, as well as graphing the cosine function.